Centibus tibi, atque in te benedicentur universe cognationis te, tere. Egresus est itaque Abraham, sicut presheparat ei dominus, et ibit cum eo non. Septuaginta quinque anorum erat Abraham cum egredere tu de Abraham. Tulit que sare uxorum sua, et lot filium fratris sui, universam que substantiam quam possederam, et animas quas fecerant in haram, et egreti sunt it ut irent in teram canaam. Sicus ceru, Thank you. 
et benedicentur in semine tuum gentes Sum propte Christum detrimentat. Perum tamen existimo omnia dotimentum esse, propta enimentem scientiam Jesu Christi Domini mei. Propta quem omnia dotimentum feci, et arbitro ut stepora, ut Christum lucrifaciam et endelia in illo. Non habens meam justitia, quae ex lege est, sed illam, quae ex fide est, Christi Jesu. Quae ex Deo est justitia in a fide, ad conoscendum illum, et virtutem resurrectionis eius, et societatem passionem illius, configuratus morti eius, Si quo modo cura vel resurrectionem, que est ex mortuis. Non quod iam et ciperim, aut iam perfectus sin, se quo autem, si quo modo comprehendam, in quo et comprehentus sum a Christo Iesu. Fratres, ego me non arbitro comprehendisse. Unum autem quae quidem retro sud obdivisent, ad ea vero quae sunt priora extendens ipsum e ipsum. Ad destinatum pesego ad abravio, 
supernovocationis de in Christo Jesu. Thank you. 
Please be seated. Now, welcome all of you here who have come to uh, support the brethren here on this special day. It is indeed quite a day for this community here. Um, just to put it in a, a little bit of a context, but in 2000. And eight, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth opened wider the gates of the Church for those communities who wished to celebrate the liturgy according to what we call the extraordinary form, that form that was current in the Church in 1962. Now, uh, the Pope, as the councils of the Church teach us, is the visible principle and foundation of unity in the Church. And this Pope, Pope Benedict, our Holy Father, is deeply conscious of the service of unity required of him by the Lord. And this is why he took that initiative. And the community here on Papastronzi responded to this and were received into full communion with the Church, reconciled with her was in 2008. That was the first and fundamental step. But there remained, of course, a further question, that of the recognition of the community as such, as a religious community. Clearly that the members of this community were living a religious life uh, in all weathers. But it still awaited the recognition and blessing of the church, recognition as an institute of consecrated life 
within the church. Now, such recognition can happen, can be given at one of two levels, either at the level of the Pope himself and the Holy See, or at the level of a diocese and its bishop. And by a decree of the 15th of August, it is my pleasure uh, and to erect this community as a diocesan institute called the Diocesan Institute of Clerical Right, as you will see already proclaimed on the notice board outside. Very up to date here. A diocesan Institute. So this community is now recognised within the family of the diocese and therefore within the church as a whole as a true full community, religious community within the Catholic Church. And today those brethren who have already made a profession under previous dispensations, we should say, can do so now publicly as members of this recognised community. So what is happening today, or what happened on the 15th of August and is being brought to completion today? Well, surely it's the birth of a new religious family within the Diocese of Aberdeen and within the Church as a whole, one with its own history, charism and mission. As we know, this religious congregation of the Sons of the Most Holy Redeemer belongs to the wider religious family stemming from St. Alphonsus Liguori, the great Italian of the 18th century, and it combines the contemplative and apostolic life. So that is what is happening, really, the birth of a community in the full sense, after perhaps a rather long and difficult pregnancy, which has come to the light of day. Well, in a moment, uh, the, those brothers who will be doing so will be making their public profession, taking vows, vows of obedience, chastity and poverty. And I'd like to reflect a little on the religious life, as we call it, and on what it is that these men are doing. Well, first of all, in the readings, we were shown the figure of Abraham. He was called away from his native land, his family and his home, as indeed all the brothers here have been, some of them could hardly be further from home, uh, geographically speaking. And he was called away from those things and taken up into the mysterious, mysterious purposes of God to become the father of a great people. He made renunciations and received great gifts. Despite his great age, and that of his wife, he was promised a great prosperity. He became a father in an overflowing way. He was asked the greatest sacrifice imaginable, as we heard in the second reading, in some ways the most terrible reading in the whole of Scripture, that of his only and beloved son, Isaac. And with a silent heart, he made that sacrifice and was blessed for his obedience. He has become the father of all believers. And in these ways, he prefigured, or better to say, I think, he created a, a kind of spiritual space which the Holy Spirit would later fill with the religious life. Because religious life is the offering of one's whole self to God and to his purposes. And then we heard St. Paul writing to the Philippians, talking as Paul <coughs> often does about himself. And what becomes radiant there in that passage, of course, is his love of Christ. He is an Abraham-like man, 
that he was seized in a way that Abraham could not be directly by the person of Christ. And he considered everything else as rubbish compared to knowing him. He wanted to be Christy form, you might say. He wanted to put on the form of Christ, the crucified and risen one. So that in him and through him, God will be all in all. And the religious life is nothing if it is not a passion for Christ. And then in the Gospel, we heard how God so loved the world as to give his only begotten son for its salvation, for its life. Poverty, chastity and obedience are ways of liberating the heart to share in this love of God for the world. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. According to St. Thomas Aquinas on the Second Vatican Council, obedience, chastity and poverty have value only as freeing the heart for love. By poverty, says St. Thomas, we renounce external goods, by chastity, our bodies, and by obedience, our will. We cannot give more. We have given everything. And into this space opened up for God, like Abraham, God pours his blessing, his life, his saving love for the world. This is what we hope for this community. This is what we pray for each of the brothers this evening. Chastity, poverty and obedience are the mark of Christ himself. As Pope John Paul II taught in Vita Consecrata, he, Christ, is the chaste, poor and obedient one par excellence. And just as the world needs Christ, so it needs his chastity, his poverty and obedience. The world needs people who will both interiorize and exteriorize, carry in their hearts and express in their outward life these attitudes, these values inwardly free and reverential attitude towards things, poverty, towards other persons, and chastity, towards activity and work, obedience. The world, as we know, and often each of us, but the world is racked, tormented by hedonism, which is the contrary of chastity, by materialism, the opposite of poverty, and individualism, the contrary of obedience. The world needs, or rather, better to say, Christ needs, Christ invites people to embody these evangelical counsels, as we call them. Christ needs friends, allies, supporters, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world will be saved. And these friends, these brethren here, friends of Christ, are not professing these counsels in order to monopolize them or to put themselves on a pedestal, but to help all of us in our different ways of life to incarnate these three values, attitudes, counsels. Through their profession, the whole church is being strengthened. The whole family of the church is rejoicing at the birth of this new community. On the 9th of August, the feast of St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, Edith Stein, and the 70th anniversary of her death, I was able to visit Auschwitz. It's not a very pleasant place, of course. The place of her death, or rather martyrdom. And the tour that you're given there is very thorough. It takes four hours, and it leaves were no stone of history unturned, no detail unmentioned. And what struck me, well one thing that struck me, was how the life in the labour camp aspect of it, also an extermination camp, labour camp, was a kind of devil's parody of the religious life. 
It was a deliberate seclusion, an almost complete separation from the rest of the world. This sort of thing had to be hidden away in a remote place so that nobody knew it was happening. There was an initiation for those who were taken to the camp. You lost your name and were given a number and you were clothed in special striped garments to find the habit of the prisoner of the camp. There was an enforced involuntary poverty, chastity and especially obedience. There was a kind of compulsory asceticism, especially as regards food and bodily hygiene. There was work and there was nothing on the horizon except death. But the work and the whole system was at the service of an evil regime. It was aimed at the degradation and destruction of the human being, dehumanization. It sprang from hatred and would naturally tend to create hatred in the hearts of those who were subjected to it. It was completely unfree. In short, it was the devil's parody of religious life. It's perhaps striking that the two canonized saints of Auschwitz, Maximilian Kolbe and Edith Stein, were both religious. He a Franciscan and she a Carmelite. But what this terrible reverse mirror reminds us is that the religious life is free or it's nothing. It comes from love and is meant to create love. It is at the service of God and his kingdom and his church. It is aimed at the transfiguration of the human being through self-emptying <coughs> love. It creates brotherhood, friendship, tenderness, warmth, the sanctuary of humanity and divinity. It is meant to be an icon of Christ. And so we pray, as I say again, we pray especially tonight for this community, for these brethren. And in these days, officially, canonically, a new religious community is being born. As I say, it's had a long and difficult pregnancy. But a mother forgets those things, as Jesus himself says, at her joy that a child is born into the world an Isaac, a beloved. So let us rejoice too, as surely we do, and many people with us who are in spirit. Let us entrust this child to the mother of God, the queen of heaven and earth, the mother of the church, the mother of fair love, the mother of good counsel. Let us entrust each of the brethren to her. And last thing, that this birth has been possible because the Holy Father, Pope Benedict, cherishes and has put himself at the service of the Catholic unity of the Church. It's because of his love of unity that this has all become possible. And so may this community, which has accepted that grace, uh, not without suffering, but may it always cherish and serve that unity. May it bring many abandoned souls back to that harbour of unity and peace, which is the Catholic Church, our mother and our teacher.
Veritas Unus Deus. Miserere nobis, Santa Maria. Ora pro nobis, Santa Dei Genitrix. Ora pro nobis, Santa Virgo Virginum. Sala 
Beatrix afflictorum, ora pro nobis, auxilium Christianorum, ora pro nobis, Regina d'Angelorum, ora pro nobis, Regina Patriarca. loving Lord, Father Almighty, eternal God, who art deserving of the highest love. I, Father Michael Mary Chanetsky, joined even the of Jesus crucified, joined even though unworthy to the congregation of the sons of the most holy redeemer, inflamed with the desire of consecrating myself entirely to thy holy love, bind myself to serve thee for the future with all my strength. By imitating the holy life of Jesus Christ, thy Son and our Redeemer, which is the only way of pleasing thee, and to labour for the salvation of the most abandoned souls, especially those who live in the country, according to the principal end of this congregation. Therefore, having since spent several days in re reflection and prayer, now in the presence of thy divine majesty, of Mary most holy and immaculate, my mistress and mother, of Saint Joseph and Saint Alphonsus and the whole court of heaven prostrate on my knees. I promise and vow obedience, chastity and poverty, renouncing all dignities and ecclesiastical offices that may perhaps hereafter be offered me. Moreover, I vow and swear to persevere in the congregation unto the death. So I promise and swear by these holy gospels of the living God, 
and I declare myself bound by these vows and this oath in the manner expressed in the rules of St. Alphonsus and of the constitutions of the sons of the Most Holy Redeemer. So help me God and these his holy gospels. And I receive you as a professed member of the congregation of the sons of the Most Holy Redeemer, bound by your holy vows and oath of perseverance. And Dixio Dei Omnipotentis Patris, Fili, et Spiritus Sancti, Descenda Super Te, et Mania Semper. Most loving Lord, Father Almighty, Eternal God, who art deserving of the highest love, I, Father Anthony Mary, crucified of the Holy Name, joined, even though unworthy, to the congregation of the sons of the Most Holy Redeemer, inflamed with the desire of consecrating myself entirely to thy holy love, bind myself to serve thee for the future with all my strength, by imitating the holy life of Jesus Christ, thy Son, and our divine Redeemer, which is the only way of pleasing thee, and to labor for the salvation of the most abandoned souls, especially those who live in the country, according to the principal end of this congregation. Therefore, having spent several days of reflection and prayer, now in the presence of thy divine majesty, of Mary, most holy and immaculate, my mistress and mother, of St. Joseph, of St. Alphonsus, and of the whole court of heaven, Prostrate on my knees, I promise and vow obedience, chastity, and poverty, renouncing all dignities and ecclesiastical offices that may perhaps hereafter be offered me. Moreover, I vow and swear to persevere in this congregation until death. So I promise and swear by these holy gospels of the living God, and I declare myself bound by these vows and this oath in the manner expressed in the rules of St. Alphonsus and the constitutions of the sons of the Most Holy Redeemer. So help me God and these his holy gospels. And I receive you as a professed member of the congregation of the soul, sons of the most holy redeemer, bound by your holy vows and oath of perseverance. In the next day, only potentes, pastors, and feeding, that spirit is under the shed of supertae, that might be supertae. Loving Lord, Father Almighty, Eternal God, who art deserving of the highest love, I, Brother Yusuf Marie, of the sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary, join, even though unworthy, to the congregation of the sons of the Most Holy Redeemer, inflamed with the desire of consecrating myself entirely to thy holy love, bind myself to serve thee for the future with all my strength, by imitating the holy life of Jesus Christ thy Son and our divine Redeemer, which is the only way of pleasing thee, and to labor for the salvation of the most abandoned souls, especially of those who live in the country, according to the principal end of this congregation. Therefore, having spent several days of reflection and prayer, now, in the presence of thy divine majesty, of Mary most holy and immaculate, my mistress and mother, of Saint Joseph and Saint Alphonsus, 
and the whole court of heaven, prostrate on my knees, I promise and vow obedience, chastity, and poverty, renouncing all dignities and ecclesiastical offices that may perhaps hereafter be offered me. Moreover, I vow and swear to persevere in the congregation until death. So I promise and swear by these holy gospels of the living God, and I declare myself bound by these vows and this oath in the manner expressed in the rules of St. Alphonsus and the constitution, constitutions of the sons of the most holy Redeemer. So help me God in these holy gospels. And I receive you as a professed member of the congregation of the sons of the most holy Redeemer, bound by your vows and oath of perseverance. Benedict is only potentis patris et fili, et spiritus sancti descendit super te, et maniat semper. Amen. Most loving Lord, Father Almighty, Eternal God, who are deserving of the highest love. I, Brother Jean Marie, crucified of the holy wounds and the sacred heart of Jesus, joined, even though unworthy, to the congregation of the sons of the most holy Redeemer, inflamed with the desire of consecrating myself entirely to thy holy love, bind myself to serve thee for the future with all my strength, by imitating the holy life of Jesus Christ, thy Son and our divine Redeemer, which is the only way of pleasing thee, and to labor for the salvation of the most abandoned souls, especially of those who live in the country, according to the principal end of this congregation. Therefore, having spent several days of reflection and prayer, now in the presence of thy divine majesty, of Mary most holy and immaculate, my mistress and mother, of Saint Joseph and Saint Alphonsus, and of the whole court of heaven, Prostrate on my knees, I promise and vow obedience, chastity, and poverty, renouncing all dignities and ecclesiastical offices that may perhaps hereafter be offered me. Moreover, I vow and swear to persevere in the congregation until death. So I promise and swear by these holy gospels of the living God, and I declare myself bound by these vows and this oath in the manner expressed in the rules of St. Alphonsus and the constitutions of the sons of the Most Holy Redeemer. So help me God and these his holy gospels. And I receive you as a professed member of the congregation of the sons of the Most Holy Redeemer, bound by your vows and oath of perseverance. Benedictio de omnipotentis, patris et fili et spiritus sancti, descendit super te, et maniat semper. Loving Lord, Father Almighty, Eternal God, who are deserving of the highest love, I, Brother Ignat de Maria, before the cross, joined even though unworthy in the congregation of the Saints of the Holy Redeemer, inflamed with the desire of consecrating myself entirely to you, Thy Holy Love, bind myself to serve Thee for the future with all my strength, by imitating the holy life of Jesus Christ, Thy Son, and I hope Thy Divine Redeemer, which is the only way of pleasing Thee. And to labor for the salvation of the most abandoned souls, especially of, the, of those who live in the country, according to the principal end of this congregation. Therefore, having spent several days of reflection and prayer, now in the presence of thy divine majesty, of Mary, most holy and immaculate, my mistress and mother, of Saint Joseph and Saint Alphonsus, and of the whole court of heaven, prostrate on my knees. I promise and vow obedience, chastity, and poverty, 
announcing all the victims and ecclesiastical officers who may perhaps hereafter be offered you. Moreover, I vow and swear to persevere in the congregation unto death. For I promise and swear by these holy gospels of the living God, and I declare myself bound by these vows and this oath, in the manner expressed in the rules of St. Apprentice, and the congregation and the constitution of the sons of the most holy redeemer, to help me God and these holy gospels. And I receive as a professed member of the congregation of the sons of the most holy redeemer, bound by your vows and oath of perseverance. Benedict John the Tenth is part of the kingdom of the Spirit of Son, the Shenet Supertay of Mayan Sun. Most loving Lord, Father Almighty, Eternal God, who art deserving of the highest love. I, Brother Martin Mary of the Crown of Thorns, joined even though unworthy to the congregation of the sons of the Most Holy Redeemer, inflamed with the desire of consecrating myself entirely to thy holy love, to bind myself to serve thee for the future with all my strength, by imitating the holy life of Jesus Christ thy Son, and our divine Redeemer, which is the only way of pleasing thee and to labour for the salvation of the most abandoned souls, especially of those who live in the country, according to the principal end of this congregation. Therefore, having spent several days of reflection and prayer, now, in the presence of thy divine majesty, of Mary, most holy and immaculate, my mistress and mother, of Saint Joseph and Saint Alphonsus, and of the whole court of heaven, prostrate on my knees, I promise and vow, obedience, chastity and poverty, renouncing all dignities and ecclesiastical offices that may perhaps hereafter be offered me. Moreover, I vow and swear to persevere in the congregation until death. So I promise and swear by these holy gospels of the living God, and I declare myself bound by these vows and this oath in the manner expressed in the rules of St. Alphonsus and the constitution of the sons of the Most Holy Redeemer. So help me God, and these his holy gospels. And I receive you as a professed member of the congregation of the sons of the most holy redeemer, bound by your holy vows and oath of perseverance. Benedict said only present his parts of fee and spirit of santi, the shin of supate of maniat santi. Loving Lord, Father Almighty, eternal God, who art deserving of the highest love, I, your Lord, perseverance, and reason for the gospel of divine mercy and time, joined even though unworthy to the congregation of the sons of the Most Holy Redeemer, and trying to survive consecrating myself entirely to thy holy love, bind myself to serve thee for the future. With all my strength, by imitating the holy life of Jesus Christ, thy Son, our divine Redeemer, which is the only way of pleasing thee, and to labor for the salvation of the most abandoned souls, especially of those who live in the country, according to the principal end of this congregation. Therefore, having spent several days of reflection and prayer, now in the presence of thy divine majesty, of Mary most holy and immaculate, 
I must have some lava or some gadget to find my pancakes. And I'll go home and call the cabin. Don't stay at my movies. I promise and vow obedience, chastity, and poverty. Moreover, I vow and swear to persevere in the congregation until death. So I promise and swear by this holy gospel to the living God. I will declare myself bound by these vows and this oath in the manner expressed in the rules of Pema Pontus and of the constitutions of the sons of the most holy of him. So help me God and these his holy gospels. And I receive you as a professed member of the congregation of the sons of the most holy redeemer, bound by your holy vows and oath of perseverance. Benedictio de omni potentis patris et fidei et spiritus sancti, the shin at super te at mani at sanct. of the sons of the most holy redeemer. In the flames of the denial, <coughs> consecrating myself entirely to thy holy love, bind myself to serve thee for the future with all my strength. I imitate in the holy life of Jesus Christ, thy son, and now of divine redeemer, which is the only way of pleasing thee, and to labor for the salvation of the most abandoned of souls, especially for those of those who live in the country according to the principal end of this congregation. Therefore, having spent several days of reflection and prayer, now in the presence of thy divine majesty, of Mary, most holy and immaculate, thy mistress and mother, of Saint Joseph and Saint Alphonsus, and of the whole court of heaven, prostrate on my knees. I promise and vow for three years, obedience, chastity and poverty, and I declare myself bound by these vows in the manner expressed in the rules of St. Alphonsus and of the Constitution of the Most Holy Redeemer. Amen. And I receive you as a professed member of the Congregation of the Sons of the Most Holy Redeemer, bound by your holy vows. And next to the omnipotentis, archers, et fidei, et spiritus sancti, et shedet supete, et maniat sancti.
Evangelium Fidelium, Pastor et Recto, Pamelum Tuum Benedictum, Quem Pastorem Ecclesiae Tuae, Res Evoluis di Propitio Teres Tice. Da equesimus bebo et exemplo quibus prei et proficere, ut ad vitam una cum grege sibi credito febeniat sempiternam, per Christum Dominum nostro. Amen.